Hi, Mosey friends. I'm Ramila, and thanks for joining us here today at Mosey for Virtual Mosey. This week is Light Week, and today we're going to be learning all about the way we perceive light. So we use our eyes. All right. So um, to learn about eyes, we're going to be doing a dissection. So. It's one of my favorite parts of science to dissect things, but I know that some people might not like it as much. So if you just want to listen today, that's totally fine. If you want to get in there and make sure you see everything that we're doing, that's great. If you want to decide later, that's fine too. If you want to have someone else watch for you and then you know decide if you want to watch it, that's okay too. Everything is acceptable. So I hope that you find a way to participate in today's um, program. So here's our model of the eye here. And you can see that's pretty big, much bigger than our eye would be. And here is our cow's eye. Again, that's much bigger than a human eye. So that's one of the reasons we can use a cow's eye to learn a little bit more about the human eye. One, they're bigger. Two, we use cows for other things like burgers and leather. We don't have a lot of use for their eyes. So I think it's pretty cool that we get to use their eyes for science and to learn more about our eyes. Um, so let's get started here. I'm gonna put on some gloves. And the reason I'm putting on gloves is because our cow's eye that we're using is preserved, which means it is has been sitting in a chemical that could be an irritant. So I want to make sure that I am touching it only using gloves. All right, and because it's been preserved and because it's from a cow, there's going to be some differences between our eye, which is live, and this cow's eye, which is from a cow and preserved. So as we go through our dissection, I'll point out some of those differences for you. All right, so first, let's take a look at the front right here. That grayish spot, which would be clear, is the cornea. So this is the front of the eye that we're looking at. So if this was in a cow, you'd kind of be able to see that much. All right, so let's actually start off at the back. There's a few important parts at the back that we don't want to miss. So some important parts are this squishy stuff that's kind of yellowish gray. That's fat. And cows, as well as we, have a layer of fat that cushions and protects our eyes. And then I'll point out some dark red areas like this. This right here, there's one over here, there's one over here, and there's a tiny little one over here. If you look pretty closely, they might resemble ground beef to you. It's kind of what they are. These are muscles. There's four muscles around a cow, cow's eye that help the cow move its eye. So those muscles help the cow move its eye up, down, left, and right. And if you're like me, or if you have a kid who's kind of snarky, you might know that humans can also roll their eyes, right? So humans actually have two more muscles. They have six muscles, and that allows us to roll our eyes. Cows can't roll their eyes. If you ever see a cow roll its eyes, walk away, we don't know what that is. All right, so those muscles are important. Um, and then one more thing I want to point out in the back is this right here. If you were able to feel it, it's a little bit harder. It kind of feels like a pencil eraser, and that is the optic nerve. All right, so we didn't really talk a, little a lot about how the eye works yet, but the eye works with the optic nerve and the brain, and all three of those help us see. So this is a very important part of the eye, and we'll see that towards the end of our di dissection too. All right, so let's go to the front. So we just said this is the cornea. Um, this white part right here, which is kind of gray on this preserved eye, that's the white of our eye. So if you're looking at an eyeball, that would be the white part. And if I kind of run my probe just along the edge right here, you'll see there's a really thin lining. That lining is called the conjunctiva. So if you have allergies or if you ever get a pink eye infection, 
this is the lining that's infected. So pink eye is also called conjunctivitis. So that's when it gets red or inflamed and might be itchy. It's a pretty cool thing to know. The white part is called the sclera. It kind of gives its eye its shape. All right, so let's take a look at the cornea here. So if this eye was on a live animal and not preserved, it would be a little bit rounder, kind of like that. And that shape and the fact that the cornea would be clear is what focuses a lot of the light that gets into the eye. So that's the entire point of the eye. The purpose of the eye is to focus the light and send that information to the brain. So this is where it starts. It starts at the cornea. The cornea focuses about three quarters of the light that goes into your eye. So if we take a look, I'll use this one. It's a very tough layer. It's not very delicate and that helps protect our eye. Human eyes have about five layers in their cornea. Cow's eyes have seven. And that's because cows spend a lot of their time with their head stuck in blades of grass. So they need a little bit of extra protection. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna move deeper into the eye and take a look at some other places in the eye. So I'm going to make this a little easier on myself. I'm gonna poke through the cornea and then when I squeeze that out, I'm gonna do it on here, all right? You might notice that we get a little bit of liquid coming out and it's watery. So that's called the aqueous humor. And then if you look back at the eye, it looks a little bit shrunken now. The aqueous humor helps give its eye its nice round shape and so that helps us focus. So now that we've taken that out, our eye looks a little bit wrinkled now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut into the eye so that we can see some more parts. So if you wanna try something like this on your own, you'll probably get to do it in your science class, maybe in middle school or high school. Um, or maybe in an anatomy class, but you can also try to do this online. There's some good digital resources for being able to dissect different things. So what I'm doing is cutting around the cornea right in the middle of the sclera. I'm gonna take that off and we're gonna take a look at the part that I just cut. All right, so that's the front. We're gonna take a look at the back here. So this thing that looks like a giant olive, that is the iris. So the iris is a muscle and that contracts and expands to control the amount of light that gets through the eye. So if you look at this hole right here, which is an oval shape, that is the pupil. So a lot of people think that a, the pupil is a thing or an object. Really, it's a hole. Cows have an oval-shaped pupil. Humans have a circular pupil. And other animals, like cats, have a sort of an elongated pupil, almost like slits. All right, so this iris right here, you, can, you might be able to see some striped, striping patterns that indicates that it's a muscle. So when it contracts, it makes the pupil smaller and lets in less light. When it relaxes, it makes the pupil bigger and lets in more light. So we're gonna take our iris off. We're gonna put it on our plate here. This is how we can remember some of the parts that we've looked at. So we've looked at the cornea, the aqueous humor, and the iris so far. The pupil we're gonna leave blank because that is the hole that's in the middle of the iris. So we're gonna go back to what's left in here. So you might notice there's an object in there that kind of looks like a marble. And if I scoop it out, it kind of feels like a marble too. 
it's hard. So this might be something that you've definitely heard of before, especially if you've studied light or optics or if you have glasses. This is called the lens. And this does the rest of the focusing of light in your eye. Now this, it would be really hard to see through this. It's kind of cloudy, all right? And it's also really hard, it's rigid. So while this cow was alive, the lens was pretty flexible. It was, you were able to squeeze it and it was crystal clear so that you'd be able to see through it. All right, so if we take a look, you might, I don't know if you can see it, but you might be able to see the writing through the lens. Let's, let's put it on the lens part. Can you see that? Mm, it's kind of cloudy. We're just gonna leave it right there. So the lens is held in place by muscles called ciliary muscles, and those muscles also expand and contract, and they change the shape of your lens to help you see and focus better. All right, so the rest of the liquid in here is the vitreous humor, which performs the same job as the aqueous humor. There's more of it, and it's made more of protein, so it kind of looks like an egg white. Um, but it helps keep it, the eye in a spherical shape, and so that allows the cornea and the lens to stay centered and spherical so that they can focus the light. So let's put our vitreous humor Oh, looks like an uncooked raw egg white. There we go. Also, that would be clear if we were looking at a live eye. All right, so we have one of the most important parts of the eye still left inside our eye. And you've probably heard this term before. It's the retina. So the retina is where our photoreceptor cells live. So humans have rods and cones, and that's part of the retina. Rods help us see light, and cones help us see color. Cones are centered around the center of the retina, so we see color more around the center of our field of vision. Um, rods are kind of dispersed throughout, so that we can see light and shades of gray throughout the entire field of our vision. So often, if you're looking at something out of the corner of your eye, you might notice what shape it is and even what it's doing, but you might not notice what color it is because of the rods and the cones are in the center. So the retina is a super delicate part of the eye. If you take a look, it's that yellowish gray layer. And if I move it around a little bit, you might notice that it is attached at one area right back here. Right? The place where it is attached is the optic nerve. And we talked about that already. That's how the messages from the eye get to the brain. So that retina, when you're looking, that's where the image of whatever you're seeing gets captured and then get sent to the brain via the optic nerve, which is attached to right here. All right, so right where the opt optic nerve is attached, there's no rods and cones on the retina, which means you have a blind spot in your eye right there. So it does help that we have two eyes and they compensate for blind spots that each eye has. All right, so I'm gonna take our retina out and we're gonna put it on our diagram. Right there, you can see it's pretty delicate. All right, and then we're gonna take a look at this last part that is still in this cow's eye. It's a shiny bluish layer. This is called the tapetum lucidum. Unfortunately, humans do not have this in our eye. The tapetum lucidum is almost like a mirror so light passes through the retina, hits the tapetum lucidum in a cow or an owl or a dog or any other animal that sees really well at night, and the light reflects back and the retina has two chances to catch that light. If it missed it the first time, it can catch it again on the way back. And then that information goes to the brain. 
So animals that have really good night vision have a tapetum lucidum. And you might have seen this if you shine a light into one of your pet's eyes or if you're driving down the road and you see some glowing eyes, that is light bouncing off an animal's tapetum lucidum. And you can see it. Again, humans don't have this in our eyes. So let me go ahead and get that out of our eye. And you'll see what a human's eye would look at, look like in the back. Here's our tapetum lucidum. All right. So if we look back at our eye, it's just black. So that's what a human's eye would look like. The back of a human's eye would just be black. It just absorbs the light. Um, we don't have as good night vision as some of the animals I mentioned. And then if we look at the place where our trapetum lucidum and our retina join and kind of poke through there, you'll notice that as we come out, we come out right where the optic nerve is. All right, so that is our eye dissection. I'm gonna put that right here. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some fun facts about the eye as well as some um, diseases that you can have with your vision. So if you have any questions about anything so far, feel free to post it in the comments. Um, or if, you, if there's something that you know about an eye, human eye, or any, any animal eye, feel free to post about that in the comments too. Share your, share your thoughts and your knowledge. So let's take a look back here. I drew an eye there, and our lens, which is right here, right, and our cornea, both of these blue parts, are what focus the image that we see. So if we see a person like this, right, this is how the light rays travel, kind of opposite. So on the back, which is this, um, this right here, which is the retina, the image actually gets captured upside down. And that's how it gets sent to the brain with the optic nerve. But do we see people upside down or do we see them right side up? I'm pretty sure we see them right side up as long as you're right side up and they're right side up. Right? So it's actually our brain that compensates for that. So we actually see everything upside down, but our brain knows, it's smart, and it knows that things are actually right side up. So it flips it around for us, so when we remember it, it's right side up. Um, so actually, when people do have vision problems or their vision impaired, um, there might be a problem with either their eye, their optic nerve, or the part of the brain that perceives that information called the visual cortex. So all three of those parts need to be functioning so that we can see perfectly. If one of those is off, then people might have vision problems or vision impairments. Um, another cool thing is that if, you're, if you have glasses, like I wear glasses or contacts, um, that is an issue with the cornea or the lens. So if you're usually, if you're young and you need glasses or contacts, it's because your cornea isn't shaped optimally. And so glasses or contacts help fix that. If you're a little bit older and you start needing reading glasses, is usually the lens. The lens is no longer as flexible as it was, and so you need those glasses to compensate for that. Um, if you've ever been to the eye doctor and you got that test where they, they put a whiff of air into your eye, hate that part, but that tests for glaucoma, which is um, an imbalance in eye pressure. So if your eye pressure is really high, then you could have glaucoma, and that's a test to, to see if you have any symptoms. So it is helpful, even though it's very uncomfortable. Um, and the other um, disease you can have with your eye that's pretty common in older people is called cataracts. So that happens when your lens gets cloudy and it looks like you're looking through a cloudy window. Um, and it's pretty simple now to take the old lens out and put in a clear um, lens, usually made of a plastic type material, and people can get their cataracts fixed pretty easily with surgery. 
So that was some fun stuff about our eye. I hope you stuck with me through our dissection, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, if not, that's great. You can post your questions later, and we can respond. Um, I hope you enjoyed our trip through the eye as if you were light. Um, thanks very much for watching, and keep discovering.